Arguably the most common question that you'll encounter when you're setting up a new Flutterflow project is whether to use Firebase or Superbase as a backend. The choice is unfortunately not straightforward and whichever one you choose, you'll need to accept certain trade-offs. My favorite phrase when talking to my clients is everything is a trade-off. You want convenience, you sacrifice flexibility. You want the benefits of a cutting edge new tool. You don't get 10 years of community support with the biggest bugs having been squashed years ago. Superbase and Firebase both excel at providing certain services and a lot of these services overlap and each do something that the other can't, which is why they're both still equally relevant. The reason that we're confronted with this choice in the first place is just a byproduct of the history of these backends. Firebase reigned supreme back in the late 2010s and Superbase is the younger of the two coming out in 2020 and quite literally marked as a Firebase alternative. Superbase is growing like crazy and people love it. And I can tell you it's an awesome platform and it is my go-to for all of the Flutterflow projects that I start. But Flutterflow was also founded in 2020. So to have integrated the little known backend that Superbase was at the time would have been suicide for them. Back then they just had no choice but to use Firebase. It was the best tool at the time for supporting mobile application development. And many would argue still is. Not only that, but Flutter and Firebase are both made by Google. So the integration between the two is pretty seamless in terms of SDKs and ecosystem. And of course, Flutterflow is built on top of Flutter, but users of Firebase started to complain. The main pain points usually came down to three things. Firebase is too expensive, Firebase imposes vendor lock-in, and Firebase has poor or arguably even no relational data capabilities. To be honest, what I noticed was that these cited reasons weren't really as much about Firebase, they were more about Firestore. Firestore is the default database that you'll use in Flutterflow as in the one that's baked in. It's arguably easier to understand if you're totally new to programming and database design. But to be fair, if you make your architectural decisions based on what you haven't learned about yet, then when you do increase your knowledge, you're probably gonna feel like an idiot for having used ignorance as the basis of that choice. And a very common occurrence with Flutterflow users is to fall into the path of least resistance when getting started. And that is Firebase and Firestore and then spend some months learning the tool and building your app and then going, oh, I think Superbase was what I needed. But that doesn't mean you should default to Superbase either. The one you choose depends on your needs and how much hassle you're willing to tolerate in the interest of current and future flexibility. Maybe this table will help a little. Now I wanna point out that this table is an oversimplification and it does kind of reflect my own biases. Superbase is newer, so the features are slightly better as opposed to Firebase being more established with better community support. As far as Flutterflow goes, Firebase is definitely more baked in than Superbase. And Firebase is also wider in scope, so you have services like push notifications that Superbase just doesn't have. But Superbase does have PostgreSQL, which is an industry standard open source database, and it is very battle-hardened and well-tested. Firestore just honestly, in my view, isn't as good a database, but it integrates super well with all of the other Firebase services. But then these services and especially Firestore are expensive. It's much cheaper to run Superbase and Superbase isn't vendor lock-in. So you can self-host it if you want to, unlike Firebase. And as far as the database design goes, NoSQL is what Firestore uses. And that is easier to understand, but SQL honestly is preferable for most of the applications that Flutterflow users are making. But outside of databases, you do have certain services in Firebase that are implicitly integrated with things like Google Play Store or sign in with Google that you need anyway. As far as authentication goes, both of these services do have authentication, but in my view, Firebase authentication is more mature and honestly, it's better. Of course, with Superbase, you get much better full text search. That's because of PostgreSQL. With Firebase, you really don't, and you have to employ another service like Agolia for that. Of course, as I said, there are some services that are only available in Firebase, such as push notifications, which Superbase doesn't have. But then in Firestore, the Firebase database, you don't get functions and deeply integrated application level logic, which you can do with Superbase. And as far as security, I think Superbase is the clear winner. Row level security is superior to Firebase rules in so many ways. Not a super simple choice, I appreciate that. But let's turn specifically to Flutterflow and go through some of the gotchas that you should know about before you make your choice. 
Firebase is probably a fact of life, even if you choose Superbase. This is because for one, sign in with Google requires a GCP project, which is easiest to set up using Firebase. For two, if you're deploying to the Google Play Store, you need a GCP project anyway. And finally, Firebase cloud messaging is often the best choice for push notifications, which Superbase doesn't have. You can choose not to have sign in with Google, not deploy on Android and use something like OneSignal for push notifications. But to be honest, not having a Firebase or GCP project at all, that's only going to be a tiny fraction of Flutterful users. Even with other tools like BuildShip, you'll almost always end up with a GCP project. So my view is that if Firebase or GCP is basically forced upon you, you might as well embrace it to some extent and centralize your stack. That doesn't mean that I'm saying not to use Superbase. I'm just saying that avoiding Firebase is not a reason in and of itself to use Superbase. Now, this next point is critical. The choice that you make here will have cascading effects throughout your project and be very difficult to back out of once it's made. And that's which auth provider to use. Now, broadly speaking, if you use Superbase auth, you'll use the Superbase database, Firebase auth, and you'll use the Firestore database. Firebase auth is, in my view, more feature complete than Superbase auth in a Flutterflow context. But really the choice should depend on which database you want to use as these are very tied together. There is a way around this, but that's an advanced topic that I will touch on at the end of this video. Now, if you choose Superbase auth, here are some native Flutterflow features that you will be locked out of using. But I do want to point out that you can still have these things in your app. You just can't get them with a click of a button and it'll take some custom code and a little bit of elbow grease. For example, you might decide on using Superbase auth, but also decide to use Firebase cloud messaging for push notifications. And you can set up a Superbase edge function that invokes Firebase without necessarily needing Firebase auth as long as you add the required code in your Flutterflow custom code editor. Okay, so, so far, Superbase might be starting to sound unappealing, but now I want to explain the real reason that I choose Superbase every time. Let me go back to something I touched on earlier, and that's Firestore, the database included with Firebase. Firestore is relatively easy to understand conceptually, and you can essentially think of your data as a tree full of key value pair objects and arrays of those objects. This isn't super hard to understand conceptually, so new users tend to gravitate towards it. The problem is that you're forced to nest data. Let's say I have two users in my database. Firestore might represent the users in a collection and carry some data like this. Let's say my app has a comment section and John writes a comment. Firestore might have a collection you'll name, for example, comments. So you've got these JSON-esque trees of saved data in Firestore. And then you can run a query on comments such that the API response from Firebase to your app looks something like this with all the comments displayed however you want in your UI and the username and avatar photo of every commenter. That's fine, except what happens if the user changes their profile photo, for example? That data won't get carried over unless you fancy coding up some complicated synchronization scripts. So you might think, okay, fine. I'll save the ID of the user in the comments collection rather than the data itself. Except now you have to do two round trip API calls in Firebase, one after the other before you get the data and incur the cost of those two calls as well. This is the essence of NoSQL. It's awesome at storing unstructured data, but if you're not sure whether you need a NoSQL database, that usually means that you probably don't need one. It's for people who are using it for a specific purpose. It's not worth the extra cost and latency. Now, of course, you need to scale up the complexity of data and the queries hugely for any of this to matter, but that happens fairly quickly. NoSQL databases can be an absolute nightmare to maintain when the data relates to a lot of other data in other parts of the database. SQL, which is a query language known as Structured Query Language, or SQL, is a language that allows relational databases, such as Superbase's PostgreSQL database, to grab data from different parts of the database and join them together. It is hard to appreciate how powerful this actually is until your app begins to rise in complexity. As you learn more about SQL and what it's capable of bit by bit, it opens up your application in immeasurable ways. Of course, you don't actually need to learn the syntax. The AI can write that for you, but it's important to understand what the most useful concepts in SQL will be. Make sure you learn about PostgreSQL functions, views, and concepts like many-to-one and many-to-many -many relationships. Incidentally, I developed a method a few months back to get Firebase Auth to work with Superbase, including the use of the integrated Superbase actions in Flutterflow. If you're interested in learning how to do that, then this is the video you'll want to watch next. Thank you.